It is now 26 minutes to 8 o'clock, and welcome back. You are with Pacific Breakfast with me, Tawili Iliao Fumayava, right here, 531 PI. Creative and cultural events have been underrepresented in the major events fund portfolio. Unlike sports events, global exemplars of major creative and cultural events are generally homegrown. This different path to becoming internationally significant means that to develop major creative and cultural events for New Zealand, there is a need to support their early development and growth. Now, for this reason, the Creative and Cultural Events Incubator has been developed. New Zealand's creative and cultural events will be able to apply for a funding boost to help them grow when the Creative and Cultural Events Incubator, uh, when the fund opens on the 1st of February, that's next Monday. Um, the Ministry of Business, Employment and Innovation announced yesterday. Uh, joining me this morning just to get a little understanding about the fund in itself, who will it qualify, what kind of support will it offer, terms and conditions, is Senior Advisor at the New Zealand Major Events, a sector of the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, uh, Nangasi Ratu Drew Naika. Hey, Vinaka Vakalevo, man, you say Yandra, welcome to the program, brother. Thank you, thank you very much for, uh, for the time. Let's get into it, shall we? Uh, can you give us a little bit of a background with regards to the Creative and Cultural Events Incubator Fund? Yes, yeah, certainly. We uh, took upon a, um, a review of the Major Events Fund back in 2019, and uh, through that, a new direction was formed. Um, we recognised that uh, there was an underrepresentation of creative and cultural events in the portfolio, and and so uh, an initiative was developed uh, called the Creative and Cultural Events Incubator to try and nurture and stimulate uh, new or existing creative and cultural events to grow to that level that, uh, that we see as internationally significant. Now, there are two, um, in, in, in terms of the eligibility, the sources, not just the sources of funding, but there are two Pacifica related mention in some of the categories. One is, say, Pacifica events, and the other one, it says Kaupapa Pacifica. Can we start with Pacifica events? What does that mean exactly? Does it mean anything that's Pacifica related, or is it ref referring to the actual Pacifica? Yeah, we <clears throat> through the fund we want to um, see events that have at their core a really uh, true and entrenched uh, Pacifica and or Maori focus. Um, <clears throat> that means that we are looking for uh, events that celebrate and, and uh, recognize the culture, but that have the potential to be uh, events that are truly global by nature. We want uh, these events to um, clearly be New Zealand based. Um, we want them to uh, reach a point where people around the world are talking about them and will, um, you know, once borders are open, compelled to travel to New Zealand to participate in them and and, and celebrate what is unique about uh, Aotearoa New Zealand and this part of the world. Now, the first round of it was February 2020. I believe that was the first time mm -hmm. um, applications were accepted for the Creative and Cultural Events Incubator, the SIP, right, the investment mm -hmm. recipients. Uh, what were some of the events that uh, were successful uh, in becoming recipients of the first uh, fund um, when that was launched? Yeah, we had uh, a really large number of events and choir in the first round, which was really heartening to know that we were reaching a, um, a, an, an audience and a, and, a, and a niche within the market that um, was uh, not really supported that well. But what we ended up with was after having around uh, over 50 uh, inquiries, we uh, found that there were roughly eight that were eligible to apply and and uh, they were put through the application process and the four that came out in the end uh, were the Māori Land Film Festival, uh, the Akimo Festival, uh, the Titai Rāwhiti Arts Festival and Te Matatini. Brother, now let's look at it from a Pacific context because you've got the Kaupapa Pacifica as well. So we know mm. that the Pacifica events are pertaining to any events that's got the potential to create loud waves and loud noises. And I know the overflow of that is, let's say, tourism. People might want to travel to Aotearoa to have a look and check out these festivals mm. as, as part of an ongoing growth. <laughs> Given uh, the current standard and current, uh, let's just say, the standard of events globally and the uh, with our borders and all of that, uh, the, 
let's just say putting a limitation and people visiting and hearing more about these events or being a part of it. I mean, how much of that uh, have you shifted in terms of the KPIs of anyone that would apply for a fund that fits the potential to grow into becoming an international sound barrier, uh, literally happening now that uh, given the limitation of travels and such? Mm. Yeah, we we know that there are limitations because the borders are closed. Uh, that does create some challenges. Um, we do expect that uh, you know all events uh, are very important and they do deliver to um, audiences that are local and domestic, um, and that is important as well. That in the current environment, given that uh, we are challenged by border closures, so uh, where events currently may not be able to attract those international visitors with the border closures being in place, domestic visitation is equally as important. So we do want to see people moving around the country to participate in events. Now let's look at it from a Pacific concept now. Um, festivals like Pacific, obviously, because these are sound making. W- eligibility for anyone that's planning or already have some kind of um, event currently going on that would like this particular support available to them. What are you looking for when you're looking at events in terms of successful applicants? How do you measure um, who would be successful? Uh, What more advice can you give them to make sure that they reach the parameter that you set for those who will be considered under the fund? Yeah, we um, we have an eligibility criteria essentially to uh, uh, to, to pre-screen those events that um, have the potential to become internationally significant. And, and I think what's really important about that is that that means scale for us. We need events that uh, 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 have a vision to grow, to be um, large, that they will attract large numbers of people, and that they have the potential through that scale to be able to become financially self-sustaining of their own right. So uh, th- those events are um, uh, often start off small. We know that, and we, we see that the global exemplars of creative and cultural events around the world um, do start small and grow to be these things. We want to support and stimulate that. Uh, the the pathway to getting there is is often long. Um, the incubator is set up to help nurture that that growth and development. And perhaps there are some new events and, and ideas out there that are coming from event organisers that want to um, to approach us about support. And we're very keen to see those ideas and come through. But what's really important is that they have a vision for this growth. They have to have a vision to become internationally significant, financially self-sustaining, and uh, aim to really attract those international visitors in the long term. It may take a few steps. We know that events uh, offer uh, focus to communities and, and celebrate what's important for them. And uh, those, are, those are equally as important. It's the growth that we're looking for and uh, the vision to become that, that global world-recognised activity. I was asking that because, you know, you know, with our Pacifica community, um, nowadays, you know, if, even mm. churches and small communities, they're always looking at putting on events to uh, either help reach a goal for a youth movement or uh, just an initiative to help a neighborhood. So well, I, I wanted to sort of get into the categories of events that uh, fit what you guys are looking for. Because a lot of these events, you never know whether they're going to become uh, or reach the potential of becoming a global event Mm. where people will hear of without an opportunity. You know, and so trying for our young event yeah, creators yeah. And, and the pioneers that are tuning in, the whole point of this Talanoa is hoping that they'll be like, okay, so there's something up there to consider. And then the next thing for me is how can they find out more details of whether their event kind of mm-hmm. qualifies to be in the incubator so that at some point they will be strong recipients for the fund. Mm, absolutely, and, and we do want people to have a look at the eligibility criteria. That's all listed on our website, um, majorevents.govt.nz. Um, and uh, within there are all the criteria that, that are listed. You'll see that there is that reference to to the vision to becoming um, uh, that, that major internationally significant activity. Um, the Pacifica uh, focus is incredibly important. We want that to be intrinsic to all of the events. Uh, and I think what's important is that uh, people that are interested in, in applying to the incubator uh, can come with a really strong, if it's a new event, a really strong business case around that development and growth. Um, 
But if they are an existing event that they're able to articulate how they're going to be able to grow to that, that level and that scale that we want to work in. And in the major event space, uh, we work at the very pointy tip of, of major event investments and uh, we have to stay in that space. There are other organisations that can support um, uh, community and regionally focused events um, and at a government level, we're interested in growing events to be at that very pointy tip. Drew, can we put forward a suggestion? Because you know these things, when it's about Pacifica, but when you go to it, it's delivered mm-hmm. through corporate mediums. If there's going to be a fun about Pacifica, can we do it the Pacific way? That is, one bowl of cover right in the middle, mm-hmm. the applicants on the other side, the funders on the other end, no contract, kere kere handshake and move on. Uh, that would be my input for this morning. Because <laughs> some of our people yeah. like, great <laughs> events, great ideas. How much paperwork? Ugh, it's all right. Let's move on. But yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe add some 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 Pacific way of doing Look, business in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and we have worked hard to try and, uh, I, I guess, uh, make the process easy. Uh, so the starting point is really around checking those criteria, making contact with us and and, and having a conversation around uh, what the event is, what you're wanting to achieve. And, and from that, we can help determine if um, uh, there is a pathway that we, can, that we can help stimulate through an investment. All right, brother. Drew Naika, Senior Advisor for New Zealand Major Events with MBIE. Hey, Vinaka Vakalebu for your time this morning, and uh, we will do a cover bowl for mm. my application. All right? Very good. Says <laughs> <laughs> Saranga, man. More than Monday, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, look. Ew. It is now 15 minutes to 8 o'clock. You're tuning in to 531